Crim 2 News at Noon begins now. Colton was a believer, so I know where Colton's at. A candlelight vigil is set for tonight for a recent Wallace High School graduate. He died just one day after receiving his diploma. That's a pretty big one, man. A major cleanup is underway today. This is in the Midwest following a rash of tornadoes. Plus, experts are warning of a significant impact to life and property in some states as they prepare for what may be the worst flood in history. Plus, temperatures are above average for today, and they'll stay that way throughout this week. Find out how those temperatures are going to be making their way to the 70s, 80s, and in some cases, the 90 degree range this week. All right, such bad weather in some places. Beautiful here. Thanks for being with us, everyone. I'm Laura Papetti. And I'm Jen York. Thanks so much for being with us. Well, we're looking at blue skies and sunshine over downtown mm, Spokane beautiful. today. Evan Narani is joining us in the Weather Center. Evan, things are just getting warmer from here on out. That's exactly right. We're seeing this the really big warm up headed our way. Uh, not only does it start today, but we're going to see parts of central Washington make it to the possible 90 degree range by about Friday and Saturday on satellite radar. We're looking at a clear view of uh, all the Northwest, really Washington, Idaho and Montana. As we go into the next several hours, we are expecting Spokane to make its way to about the 80 degree marker. That's where we see it for an afternoon high sunny skies all along the way. There may be a few clouds here and there, but otherwise take a look at where those temperatures already are to start off our noon hour. We've got uh, about upper 70s already in Moses Lake, 78 in Moses Lake, 78 in Natchi, 80 degrees right now in Omac, 72 in Spokane, and 70 in Sandpoint. Outside, we are seeing a few clouds linger, but otherwise beautiful weather pattern uh, right now and over the next few days. So we've been talking about all the beautiful weather that we've been seeing around us, although extreme weather is continuing to make its way uh, north of Kansas. So uh, we are still talking about a lot of extreme weather off to about uh, the Midwest area. We want to take you over to the wall and talk about what's in store for the Midwest as we head towards the next few days and the next few weeks. Now, a lot of that activity really picked up yesterday where federal officials say preliminary reports show more than 50 tornadoes may have touched down yesterday in eight states. You're looking at some of that footage here behind me near Dayton, Ohio. Crews say a tornado leveled or damaged at least 75 homes near Dayton. You're looking at a drone video of the debris field. Uh, that we will be in just a minute. Uh, the storm is being blamed for at least one death in the state. Now, further south in Arkansas, uh, the Arkansas River is slowly rising, rising. It is impacting parts of Arkansas and Oklahoma, and there is concern that additional rainfall over the next few days could cause the levees to break. The river is expected to crest tomorrow at around 20 feet above flood stage, which would be a record. To stay up to date on the severe weather throughout the South and Midwest, be sure to check creme.com. You can also find that information on, CREM, on the CREM2 mobile app. And we, of course, will be continuing to update you here at noon and on CREM2 Morning News as well. Back to you guys. All right, that's heartbreaking to look at some of that video. Mm -hmm. People are struggling. Back here at home, a summer burn ban going into effect this week. This will be for Grant County. That means no outdoor burning is allowed, including burning yard waste and other private burnings. The ban is in effect until September 30th. There are some exceptions. Recreational campfires are allowed at public campgrounds when allowed, and recreational campfires at homes with private fire pits are also allowed, but there must be a 25 foot buffer zone around those private fire pits. Tonight, friends and family will gather to honor the life of a North Idaho teenager. 18 year old Colton Holzu died this past weekend in a car crash. A candlelight vigil is scheduled tonight at Wallace High School. Now the crash happened Saturday near Kellogg. This is just one day after he graduated from high school. Investigators believe someone set off fireworks in the car. They say the 18 year old driver lost control and then hit a guardrail. You know, the, the three boys that were in that car with him, don't beat yourself up for this. Colton was a believer. So I know where Colton's at and there's going to I'm going to see him again. He's probably up there prepping a field for me to go play <laughs> football with him or something. Tonight's candlelight vigil will be held at Wallace High School. The vigil begins at 730 on the school's lawn. For more information on that vigil or how to help the family cover cover funeral expenses, you can head to creme.com. New at noon this afternoon, the Supreme Court is upholding an Indiana law requiring abortion providers to bury or cremate fetal remains. 
The justices ruling 7 to 2 say Indiana can mandate fetal remains be treated as human remains. However, the justices let a lower court, court ruling stand. It says Indiana cannot stop a woman from getting an abortion due to fetal disabilities or because of the sex or race of the fetus. Louisiana could pass a law as soon as today to ban abortions outright after six weeks. Eight states have passed restrictive abortion laws just this year. Experts say human traffic jams are to blame for several deaths on Mount Everest. This weekend, a Colorado man died after summiting the mountain. He is the 11th person to die in just 12 days. Experts say oxygen is key to surviving the what's called death zone. That's an area about 26,000 feet. The backups are causing people to run low on their oxygen supply, and therefore uh, that's causing the problem in the deaths. The climbing season is short on Mount Everest. That season wraps up at the end of this month. Pretty devastating, and people pay for permits. So some people are talking about maybe they need to be limiting the permits right. allowed, you know, to climb Mount Everest since this is a devastating year. And they're having such a backup, and that may be one way to control it. Mm -hmm. All right, it's 12:06 now. The World Health Organization is recognizing a new illness today, and this one involves being overworked. We'll tell you about the symptoms.